I regularly get threats from people who say they're going to murder me or chop my head off or burn me alive or rape my wife or rape my mother or slaughter my children. That's a way of life for me because I criticize Muhammad, founder of the religion of peace. I regard these constant threats both as the fruit of Islam and as signs of desperation. But it's rare to see a Muslim throw so many attacks and insults at me at once that his soul lays open before me. We're about to journey into the heart of a true jihadi. Let me give a little background first. In a recent video, I shared a bunch of comments Muslims posted about me during Ramadan, their holiest month, and I pointed out the obvious. Here's a clip. I'm inside your head, and I'm going to be there for a while. My motto is, if you get inside someone's head, stay there. When I get inside someone's head, I turn the lights on, then I move some furniture around, then I sit down on the sofa and start playing videos. So get used to me being inside your head, because I'm not going anywhere. Then I drew attention to something just as obvious, namely that Muslims can't figure out what to do about me because they only have two ways of dealing with problems. You have no clue what to do about the fact that I'm inside your head. Islam only has two ways of dealing with problems, physical abuse and verbal abuse. In Muslim countries, it's physical abuse. In non-Muslim countries, it's usually verbal abuse. If someone criticizes Islam in a non-Muslim country, you call them racists, you call them Jews, you call them bigots, you call them Islamophobes, you hurl profanities at them, you tell them they're going to burn in hell, you send them threats. You do this because it's an easy way to manipulate weak-minded people. But then you run into someone who can take limitless verbal abuse and you don't know what to do because you have no plan B. You have no other tools in your tool belt. Maybe it's time for a new approach. So my point was that Muslims are frustrated by the fact that I'm so thoroughly embedded in their heads, but they have absolutely no way of dealing with it because the kinds of abuse they use to silence people just don't work on the dizzle. In response to my remarks, one brave Muslim decided to try everything at once. His post reminds me of the old kung fu movie, The Invincible Armor, where the master of the iron armor was impervious to almost all attacks, but always had an unknown weak spot, so his opponents would have to systematically hit him everywhere in order to find his weakness. Watch how many attacks this guy throws at me, searching for my weakness, trying desperately to prove that Muhammad's way still works. By the way, graphic language warning, although I am going to censor some words in case your children are within hearing distance. From the mind of Islam, my life forever, Allah willing, whom we'll simply call Threat Man for short, Yes, it does work, but we enjoy to see you suffer. Islam is a beautiful religion. Yeah. You talk about Ramadan and Muslims eating like crazy at night while they fasted all day. How incensored do you know how and how much Muslims eat in their own homes? I know for sure you weren't there because we would chop, chop, chop your head of. You scum, it's for Biden in Islam when you break fast to eat a lot, you stupid censored. That could kill a person. This show us who stupid and ignorant you are, you pig. You know nothing about Islam, really Christianity too. Nothing, nada. You are doing all this for money, you piece of censored. Hey, some luck for Yui. Have seen you twice, both times I wanted to stick a knife in you. I can't wait until I see you in Manhattan again. You will regret all these videos and stewoid talk. Ramadan is the best month of all others. You will never know what it's like to fast properly and enjoy the blessed month of Ramadan. And it does not matter if it's Ramadan or not. You think just we have the love for others and between ourselves that we are now just start to be nice to you. Oh yeah. Hi Dave. How are you body? How are you sick retarded kids? Those piglets censored you David Shaitan wood pig censored. How is your super whore wife? Is she still censored the whole town? You know that I know that censored. That's why she left your stupid psych path censored censored. Please psycho whatever you do, do not rape and kill your own children. And yes, it's true that your ex-wife was a whore. But some therapy, maybe she will stop. Censored everybody, I heard you and that fake Muslim Nabil broke up. What happens? There was a strong sexual tension between you two, but him censored your wife. I would never believe that. But your Christian Zionist censored. Not surprised. 
Wow. We've got name-calling, shaitan, scum, psycho, and a bunch of words I censored. We've got threats of violence. He wants to stick a knife in me. We've got opportunity. He says he's seen me twice in Manhattan, so he's local. We've got attacks on my motives. I'm just in this for the money. We've got mockery of my children. Two of my children have a genetic muscle disease. Their muscles don't work. They breathe through machines. We feed them through tubes. So he asks, how are you sick, retarded kids, and calls them piglets? Notice that he must have been following me for a while. Most people don't know about my children. Then we have multiple comments about my wife. He calls her super whore, says that she's had sex with the entire town. My goodness, we live in the Bronx. Then he calls her my ex-wife, so apparently we're divorced. He calls Nabil a fake Muslim and says that there's a strong sexual tension between Nabil and me and that my wife cheated on me with Nabil. So poor Nabil was attracted to both me and my wife. But I'm even worse off because he begs me not to rape and kill my children. So I must be sexually attracted to my wife, my children, Nabil, and pigs. And all of this is wrapped up in so much insane rambling, so many misspelled words, and so much proof that we're dealing with a stalker, it's actually believable that this guy is coming after me. This is brilliant. It's evil, but brilliant. Like Islam, evil, but brilliant. You can't come up with a better system for violently subjugating people while pretending to be peaceful than Islam. So, has our hero finally met his match? Here's the reply I posted. Hi, Sunshine. If you want to see me in Manhattan again, I have class tomorrow night. I get out at 9.30 p.m., and it's about a 10-minute walk to the Chambers Street Station. I take the two train. We can have a great conversation if you show up. If you can't make it, I'll take a picture of myself there so that everyone will know what a total coward you are. Afterwards, I'll continue exposing your false prophet and leading Muslims to their true Lord, Jesus Christ. Cheers, XOXOXO. I posted that last night. Earlier tonight, I kept my promise. Here's the picture. 9.40 p.m., Chambers Street Station, 2 train. But I thought a video would be even better, so here we go. Well, it's 9.40 p.m. outside the Chambers Street Station, 2 train. Here I am, and there you are. But where is the threat man? He's at home, watching my videos. Keep watching, threat man. Now, how can I possibly make it any clearer that threats and intimidation and insults just aren't going to work? To all you jihadis who are watching, this head is like Fort Knox. You're not getting in without passing through security. And the only things that get through my security checkpoints are good arguments. But you don't have any good arguments. You have the worst arguments that have ever been offered by anyone for any position. So you have no way of getting inside my head. But I can get inside your head anytime I want. It's more difficult for me to rearrange my sock drawer than to get inside your head. I got people like Threatman stalking me because I'm inside their heads, eating a bag of chips and watching videos sitting on their brain couches with my feet propped up on their frontal lobes. I live in Threatman's head rent free. It's easy for me to get inside your heads because Islam creates a culture of very fragile psyches. An individual Muslim might have tremendous self-control and self-discipline, but culturally, Islam encourages weak-mindedness. This is why we see endless terrorist attacks against anyone who disagrees with Muhammad about anything. This is why we see international riots over cartoons. This is why a person who's simply accused of throwing a Quran in the garbage or insulting Muhammad can be beaten to death in the streets. This is why Muslim organizations like CARE spend all day, every day, whining. Everyone's against us. Everyone's an Islamophobe. We can't take it. Here again, an individual Muslim might be able to take criticism, but culturally, Muslims can't deal with disagreement or disapproval or denigration. Why? Because Islamic culture is based on Muhammad, and Muhammad's mind was made of candy glass. That's why he ordered his followers to assassinate men and women who criticized him. He couldn't take it. And now there's a culture built in his image. Not very difficult to get inside your heads. This head was once filled with anger, hatred, rage, and violence. That's why I understand Islam so well. But this head was eventually transformed by the most powerful mind, the most indomitable will that man has ever witnessed. He was so mentally tough that when they falsely accused him and punished him with the most brutal torture the Roman Empire could invent, he responded in the midst of unfathomable agony, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
And because Christ's followers have the mind of Christ, I not only understand you, I want to help you. Threat men, and everyone out there like him, you were created in the image of God. Your minds have been warped and twisted by sin and selfishness and the teachings of the most obvious false prophet in history. But your minds don't have to stay that way. If you want to be transformed, click on this video and submit to the Lord who created you. God bless you in the name of Jesus.